Such an event cannot possibly be explained by the science of actual experience. That means that one can't possibly explain how the universe appeared through physical interactions alone. We can understand this conclusion in another way. Einstein introduced the idea that mass is equivalent to energy. And we know that all energy must have an energetic source. The total mass of the universe must also have an energetic source. But the source and origin of all physical matter cannot itself be physical. The only real non-physical principle that we know is consciousness. So the source and basis of the universe must be universal consciousness. The eminent astronomer Sir James Jeans recognized this. He wrote, the universe can best be pictured, although still very imperfectly and inadequately, as consisting of pure thought. The universe begins to look more like a great thought than like a great machine. He added that the universe must exist within a universal mind. The Vedic wisdom tradition confirms that the universal conscious self produces and maintains the bodies of living beings, the conscious self within the body, and the universe in which we live. Now we come to the question of relationship. It's through relationship that we get our identity and our necessities of life. Einstein's theory of relativity states that all our knowledge is relative. That means that relationship is the basis of everything that we know. Relationship is universal. And the Vedic wisdom tradition explains that the universal relationship is our relationship with the universal self who is the basis of the whole universe and of our life within it. The process for realizing this relationship is called yoga. Nowadays, most people think that yoga means physical exercises from the East. But the word yoga actually means meeting, and it refers to the meeting of the individual conscious self and the supreme conscious self. Physical yoga, or hatha yoga, is simply part of an eight-step process, and it's intended to help to make the body fitter for long meditation. In the Vedic tradition, there are different kinds of yoga. For instance, yoga of work involves offering the results of work and pious activity to the Supreme. Higher than that is the yoga of knowledge, in which one understands and realizes the nature of matter, spirit, and the controller of both. The yoga of meditating on the Lord within the heart is higher still because it brings one closer to the Supreme Personality. Advanced yogis realize that the same Lord is present along with the individual conscious self in the hearts of all creatures. They also develop mystic powers so that they can transcend the laws of nature. It's very difficult to practice this yoga in this age. Bhagavad Gita and other Vedic literatures say that the very highest form of yoga is the yoga of divine loving service or bhakti yoga. Bhakti yogis offer their activities, their minds, their hearts and their very self in divine loving service to the Supreme Personality. This form of yoga gives the closest connection and relationship with the supremely lovable Supreme Personality. That's why it's known as the highest form of knowledge and that's why it gives the highest happiness. The major theistic religions such as Christianity, Islam and Judaism as well as the Vedic Vaishnav tradition all teach this yoga of loving service in the form of worship, prayer, praise, meditation and active service. The Vedic tradition teaches us that the most practical and effective bhakti process in this age is chanting the holy names of the Supreme Personality. Names such as Jehovah, Allah, Christ, Krishna, 
Govinda, and so on. These holy names are spiritual sound vibrations and they purify and enliven the soul. Now what is the meaning and purpose of life? We create objects with a specific intention and the Vedic wisdom tradition tells us that the universal self also has a specific intention in creating and maintaining the universe and our bodies. This intention is that we should understand that we are the conscious spirit self within the body and that we should learn to live as conscious spirit in the material world. We're not actually part of this material world. We belong to the higher nature of pure consciousness and we should learn how to go there and live there in pure love and happiness. Everybody wants peace and love. And here's the Vedic peace formula. Peace comes from knowing how the universal self creates and maintains our life. We create things so that we can become happy and satisfied. And the universal self has created this world for universal happiness and satisfaction. The more we satisfy the universal self in everything we do, the happier we'll be. The universal self has provided everything for our benefit and controls everything and everyone for their ultimate benefit. He's the closest and dearest friend of everyone, including the animals, the birds, the fishes, and the trees and plants. Everybody wants to love and be loved. Love will come, universal love, when we direct our tendency to love to our closest and dearest friend, the universal self. When we know his love for us, we will not need to make unreasonable demands on others, nor will we depend on them excessively. There will be no need to create distress for ourselves and for others. His love for everyone will flow through us and we will be able to love all on behalf of the universal self. This is the actual process of universal love. That's how we can find peace and that's how we can love each other truly and unconditionally. Then we can find happiness in loving relationships.